Right, this is uh, a, a, video, a short video on the assembly of the, uh, the LE Velocet Mark III bottom end. Uh, and we're going to go through the pitfalls. Uh, the, uh, most of the pitfalls centre around the uh, rear main bearing. Uh, and this is it here, you see. And it, has, uh, it, it, it consists of a, a bearing housing this bronze thing here which acts as a thrust face for both the crankshaft thrust washer and a thrust washer on the other side the main bearing however is 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 inserted into this bearing so that there are this uh, as well as uh, distributing oil via the oil hole here uh, to the uh, uh, camshaft and the crank, sh one half of the crankshaft, and then the uh, other uh, uh, other end of the crankshaft is dealt with with another oil feed. But we're going to concentrate on this here now because it is the difficult thing, and this can be prone to quite a lot of wear, and then the oil pressure uh, will go down to the big end which it feeds, which will y usually lead fairly quickly to a total big end failure. And I've seen many, many of these bikes with the rear main bearing, uh, rear main, rear big end bearing worn out prematurely. And, you'll all, and I've seen many, many LE Mark III's and they've all got uh, a, a dud big end. And most of them, it is this rear main, it is fed by this uh, here. So let's move on to another thing, besides wear, the other thing that can suffer from is looseness. The whole shooting match uh, can be loose in the aluminium crankcase housing, which is of course the, the whole structure right here. And when I looked closely at this, uh, I could see that there were tiny little, uh, almost punch marks all the way around here. And this has been designed to uh, to make uh, to clue to basically tighten up the fit between the this and this. Uh, unfortunately, they have put it in the wrong position because the the, the distance between here and here uh, should be exactly equal to the distance between here and here. And this is not knocked in enough. This this uh, bearing housing and thrust uh, assembly is too far in this direction, and that would need re uh, rejigging. I favour tinning these bearings when when they go faulty, which they often can do. For instance, on the crankshaft that we're going to, on the assembly we're going to do today, that has already occurred and has been rectified by been rectified by soldering the uh, the housing and doing it up that way. I have removed the flywheel bearing housing. Uh, there is this oil feed there, that's straightforward, that just comes straight off. And now I'm going to remove the old crankshaft. This is not quite as simple as it might seem because I have to line up the con rods with the gaps here and here in order to remove the crankshaft so it's not quite as there we are it's half out I've got to support it because I do not want to damage that rear main bearing and then we have it it's just about to come out and there we have the old crankshaft out uh, a bit disappointing because this was trued by alpha bearings but had developed quite a lot of slop uh, as you can see uh, in only a few thousand miles running so I thought I'd bite the bullet give myself a really expensive present and have a, uh, a roller bearing conversion and that's what the, this new crankshaft is it's got roller bearing big ends and we're now going to try and fit it into its first main bearing housing now if we look at this one here you'll see that it's just proud of the aluminium here can you see it the housing is just proud of the aluminium and just the correct uh, at the other side is just correct here as well. 
So the next job is to fit the crank shaft into this large bearing here. So we're going to do that now. We've removed the old crank shaft from this and we're having our uprated alpha main bearing convert alpha roller bearing big end conversion. Not cheap, but uh, <laughs> will <laughs> last indefinitely as opposed to the rather fragile uh, ends of the uh, existing uh, situation where the the big ends are really too narrow for their usage and it does mean it's the weak spot of these engines so there's the thrust uh, bearing in there trapped between this collar and this here and when you when you tighten the gear on here it'll press against this and it will tighten this here that's one thrust washer and the other thrust washer is is there so you can see that the bearing runs between these two thrust washers here and the bronze housing that the whole bearing runs in. So uh, the, the bearing is now in one of its, uh, one of its uh, bearings, the difficult main one that we've done now. So we're now going to put the, uh, we're going to put the thrust washer on. And now we're going to uh, squeeze a gear on. Right, this is the uh, timing pinion. And it fits with this outer bearing outside. And the chamfer on the gears on the inside. And we must line up the keyway. Keyway is most important. And we mustn't make a mistake because if we do, we could chew up the keyway and then we would end up with a right royal mess. <laughs>